I get asked fairly often about uh, my approach to kind of improvising legato, so I wanted to do a video just discussing the things that I think are important if you want to be doing this kind of thing. So I don't know that there's any shortcut to any of this, but I'm just going to describe the things that I've done a lot of and still do a lot of. I guess we should also discuss what is legato. So the, the idea is that we're playing kind of more than one note without picking every single note, right? So that's the basic kind of definition. So that sort of thing. You know, to, to some extent or another. kinds of ideas. So what I wanted to kind of talk about was to start with obviously there's kind of going to be basics to this technique stuff so the idea is that you need to be learning this kind of stuff about hammering on and pulling off. Descending is often the thing that people have more trouble with so I would suggest that maybe you focus on that from the get-go. Trying to make that feel. Kind of liquid is the way that I would describe it. So you want to, it takes years by the way to, to get anywhere uh, with this kind of stuff, but I think it's worth it. So yeah, the idea is that you're hammering on. and pulling off. And the right hand takes a, a bit of a back seat. And for me, all I do is pick string changes. But the real key to all of this for me is that as a kid, I spent ages and ages really drilling the positions of the major scale. So if I say C major, for you, maybe you think of this kind of thing. But for me, I see C major as... fretboard so the the thing that can be a fairly useful way to kind of get this home but without thinking of it in this way is the mode so if you think about positions of the mode so you've got C Ionian D Dorian E Phrygian G Mixolydian Aeolian and B Locrian and then we're back so you could also just think of them as C major starting from the first degree of the scale uh, from the second degree, from the third degree, from the fourth degree, from the fifth degree, from the uh, sixth degree, and from the seventh degree. So that's what I would encourage you to really start focusing on right away if you're interested in being able to improvise this legato stuff. Three note per string is really the basis of what almost everyone who does this does, no matter who it is. I think like Brett Garcia, Tom Quayle, everyone who plays this legato style the three note per string is basically the bedrock of the whole thing. So what I would say is what you want to start doing early on, maybe straight away, is finding songs in all sorts of keys and starting to get familiar. So maybe you say, right, today I'm going to try and play in B major and I'm going to see how many of these positions I can recall. <laughs> So 
So there's one if I start from the first degree and maybe you switch it up and say, right, I'm gonna start from the sixth degree now. Um, you know, and start to try and just think about really mapping out what B major looks like all over the fretboard and being able to subconsciously and unconsciously or whatever you want to think of it as be able to switch between these positions and stuff without having too much trouble at all that's kind of the goal there and once you can do that I feel like that has given you a really, really good bedrock for being able to do this three note per string improvising stuff. So that's kind of step one, really, once you've started to get the idea of the, the basics of legato stuff. What I think is really important next is to try and visualize that major scale in each position all over the neck and maybe you could be methodical about this and try and give yourself like a, a plan and you say right on day one I'm going to focus just on the first position for every key so B major F sharp major and then D flat major then A flat major then E flat major. I mean, that's actually kind of not the first position, is it? That would be. And maybe B flat major then. You know, you could do this in context with songs or with a metronome, but what is really important, I think, is to start to try and. get those things really comfortable under your fingers. And now, obviously, if you want to do this kind of with more scales, you could do, but I think it's a, a lot of work anyway with the major scale, so I'd start there. View the relative major and kind of natural minor as the same thing, so I'm just thinking C major, whether I'm playing. <laughs> over an A minor-ish progression in C major or C major. I'm not thinking about things being. Harmonic or melodic minor, though if you wanted to get those under your fingers in this legato style as well, obviously what you'd need to do would be to run. In the same way. This kind of thing. Right, so beyond this though, what I think comes next is the idea that we play what we practice. So what you should be practicing, I think, is to be able to do more than just this kind of thing. And so one thing that I like to think about and that I've heard Alan Holdsworth talk about is permutations. So if you imagine you've got three notes per string, right? Or that's our thing instead of just going one, two, three, one, two, three, we want to think about changing those orders up. So you practice, you know, when you're saying, okay, I'm practicing the first position. One, three, two, 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 one, three, two. Or three, two, one, 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 three. Like that or two one three and all of this stuff is actually surprisingly quite tricky which to me shows that it's worth doing so 
those kinds of permutations are great and you know you can write your own and do that but be methodical about that and think right okay so for this I'm gonna ascend going two one three two one three two one three two one three and try and play that in triplet feel as well as 16th feel so That's a good thing to do. So if you've got your metronome, I'll just show you this. Something like. Uh, you know, things like that, that you're not necessarily having to think too hard about what's going on, you're just trying to execute that cleanly. And so yeah, permutations and try and be a bit free with those. The next thing that I think is really good for this kind of thing is to think about permutations where you've got three and five on the next string, especially if you're going for this even thing. Two, three, four. Because it shakes out. Basically, I'm not having to think about the, the shape part is what I'm saying. That has become something that's kind of subconscious, unconscious, that because I've practiced this kind of thing so much that I'm not thinking about the underlying shape. I'm just thinking about C major on wherever it falls on the neck. And what I'm thinking about is the permutations underneath. So like there, we've got three descending and five on the B string. And that sort of stuff works really well for trying to even out your technique. Two, three, four. And like I say, the same kind of thing, write yourself your own permutations. So maybe two, two, three, one, three, one, two, three, four, uh, one, Two, three, one, three, one, two, three, one. Like that. Don't forget that you could also try kind of pentatonic shapes with three note per string. And this also really helps with this kind of permutation stuff because you can get some interesting stuff. Again, you know, if I'm thinking three and five, one, two, three, one, three, two, one, two, three, one, three, one, two, three. Whatever the underlying shape is, I'm thinking about this permutation as a phrase through that shape instead of just thinking, you know, 
too hard about the shape. You know, this sort of thing I think is the key to being able to put together these longer legato phrases, I think, because it's the building blocks for this stuff. And practice doing things slowly and getting the idea that you could put these things together. And start to build these longer phrases with it in mind that you're kind of running through the rails of this major scale. but with different permutations. And you'll find things that you like the sound of, and that's, I think, how you can make your own journey through this legato world. Um, so the key to it really is having a really great and uh, thorough understanding of each of the major scales and how it fits on the neck in three note per strings. I think there's no getting around that that is pretty much essential if you want to be able to improvise in this way. And then starting to think about these bigger chunks and how you're gonna navigate your way through them with permutations. And you can start forcing that by trying things like one, two, three, one, three, one, two, three. Experiment and find the ones that work for you. But don't forget that what you practice is what will eventually come out in your playing, hopefully. And so if you want to be better at this kind of thing, that's what I think you need to practice is being able to <laughs> navigate your way around the fretboard in this way three note per strings, um, I'll put together a, a little sheet, I think, of some of the permutations that I like to use and just some examples of how I might run this sort of thing. But try it with a backing track, try it with songs you know, try it in every key. Uh, I think that's the real key to this stuff is to start building real comfortability with these three note per strings all over the neck. And that is, I think, the most important key to getting hold of this three note per string legato stuff. I don't think there's any other way around it. Let me know in the comments if you can think of another way. Maybe learning loads of other licks, but I think it's easier to learn licks if you have a really good fundamental framework underneath as well. Catch you in another video soon. Cheers.